Kibazi too. How's it going, everybody? Um, if you can't tell, I am a bit tired. The reason being is that I got out of work like maybe 30 minutes ago and got home about 10 or 15 minutes ago. And I really wanted to upload for y'all tonight just because I didn't have any time at all to upload yesterday. And I have some free time right now. Plus, this battle is relatively short. I believe it's under 20 turns. It was pretty straightforward and actually turned out to be pretty close. And I felt it was upload worthy because as you can see from my team, I got a really, really fun team based around Swallow. Uh, the reason why I'm using Swallow is kind of the same reason why I use Zangoose. RU has become kind of boring to me, so I decided to try out some different fun Pokemon that nobody really uses in RU. So, last battle was Zangoose, and this battle is Swallow. And the reason why I wanted to use Swallow is because Swallow is definitely a giant threat in the NU tier. Unfortunately, in NU, there are really no good spinners at all. I mean, I guess Armaldo and Wartrader to an extent. And, well, Offensive Torkoal isn't that bad of a spinner, but... I wanted to use it in RU because you have Hitmonchan, you have Kabutops, and you have Karogono, which are three very good spinners. And then you have Sandslash. It's Sandslash. So it's... Forget Sandslash. But yeah, I decided to go with Hitmonchan just because of Foresight, which means even on Ghost types, after going for a Foresight, Hitmonchan will be able to Rapid Spin. So I decided to throw that in there. And then I threw in Choice Bandit Entei, Standard Dredagon, Standard Ferroseed, and a very cool Extra Belt Mesprit set that I believe I got from a very old RMT that I wanted to use again because I never really used Mesprit in RU, so I decided why not to try it out. Now, looking at threats to my opponents out of the field, if I lose my Entei, Absol could possibly sweep through my team with the proper prediction for my opponent, and if I lose my Hitmonchan and he gets up his hazards with Quillfish and Aerodactyl, I could be in a very, very bad position, as well as... If Liligant goes for two Quiver Dances, it could possibly sweep me, especially if he ends up putting my Dredagon to sleep, which is really the only one thing that I have to stop Liligant. So with that, I have to watch out for Absol and Liligant. So I'm going to be leading off my Dredagon, expecting him just to lead off with the Aerodactyl, then predicting him to predict me to go for an offensive move, predicting him the taunt. I'm actually going to go for my Stealth Rocks, which is exactly what happens as this turn I'm going to go for the Dragon Claw. Obviously he knows after an Intimidate, Quillfish will be able to live any hit that I want to go for. And even though I am Intimidated, Dragon Claw still did a very good amount of damage. So I'm very positive that a super effective Earthquake while not being stabbed and at minus one should be an easy to KO as I'm going to be able to get rid of the Quillfish as he gets up Lair Spikes and Toxic Spikes. So from my opponent's perspective, he probably thinks that I'm in a very, very bad position right now. But because I have Foresight and Rapid Spin on him on Chan, I'm actually not really too worried right now. So he's going to bring in the Lily again. Unfortunately for him, he actually ends up missing the Sleep Powder, which plays a very, very big role. Because this turn, I'm going to switch into my anti predicting him to go for another Sleep Powder. And I will freely be able to go for the Flare Blitz. And due to the fact that he lost the Quillfish, something on his team is going to get knocked out. Not even Aerodactyl is going to appreciate an Adamant Choice Banded Flare Blitz. But then again, Sleep Powder is only 75 accuracy. It does have a 25% chance to miss. So eventually it will miss. And unfortunately for my opponent, it missed for him. So as he brings in the Aerodactyl, I know I will have use for Entei later in this battle. Especially if I'm able to spin away the hazard. So I switch directly into my Ferrisseed. As he misses the Rock Slide, he is then going to go for the Fire Fang. I'm going to be able to live that. And in return, knock him out with a Jarrah Ball. And then this turn is going to prove that the Rock slide miss did not matter whatsoever because either way his dust nor would have been able to knock me out with the fire punch so now i'm going to be able to get this very well needed free switch into my hitmonchan and a lot of people make the mistake of forgetting that hitmonchan can learn foresight and rapid spin so he's actually going to end up staying in allowing me to foresight and now i'm going to be able to go for that rapid spin which means my ante will now be able to freely switch in an extreme speed as soon as i get rid of the Zusnor. so he's going to knock me out with an earthquake allowing me to now get a free switch into my swallow knowing that i should be able to take a fire punch i'm just going to go for the brave bird to get off a bit of damage as he's actually going to go for the pain split i'm not too sure why i guess maybe he thought fire punch wouldn't do too much damage to me but this turn because i went for the foresight with my Hitmonchan, I'm going to be able to go for the Facade and ensure that I will be able to knock out the Dustnor. So as he brings in the Hitmonlee, I'm just going to leave in my Swallow for fodder, but I'm actually going to be able to just barely live the combination of Fake Out and Toxic, allow me to go for a quick attack and bring down this Hitmonlee to the point where I can now bring in my Entei, safely go for the Extreme Speed, live Toxic, and also get off an Extreme Speed on the Absol. So I knock out the Hitmonlee, as he brings in the Absol, I'm going to be able to live on 8%, 
and because extreme speed is plus two priority I will be able to out prioritize his sucker punch if he did go for it and I'm gonna be able to bring him down to a point where life will recoil will knock him out and that's going to be the 2-0 victory in my favor so as you can see there that play with Ante was definitely the the play I would have to say kind of won me this battle just because if I had lost Entei it would have come down to a prediction game between Hitmonlee and Absol and my Mesprit and Drodagon. But yeah in the end it was a really fun close straightforward battle as I said pretty short. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, hopefully I can uh, get some more battles racked up when I do get some more free time like I have right now. But yeah I just got college. I got work and just uh, <laughs> this is probably the busiest my life has been in a very long time. But either way I will definitely make time to upload for you guys because I enjoy uploading, I enjoy narrating, and I love reading y'all's comments and all, everything else basically. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just rambling, but yeah, uh, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to some more content, and with that, I am out of here. Later, everybody.